Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info and our review of the Glide Charge Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery Bank by Space Gravity. Now, since most non-solar power banks are usually pretty similar, we don't actually review a lot of them here on the channel unless they offer something unique or special that makes them stand out. Well, the Glide Charge Power Bank definitely does that. I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the Glide Charge uses a lithium iron phosphate battery as opposed to a traditional lithium ion battery. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are generally considered to be safer and more stable, are better able to handle extreme temperatures, and they can also provide faster charging speeds. Which is nice. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are also more environmentally friendly as they are less toxic than their lithium iron counterparts and offer up a longer lifespan, which means they can be used longer before being discarded. And they are more efficient, which means they use less energy overall. But perhaps most importantly, lithium iron phosphate batteries are cobalt free, which further contributes to the bank's eco-friendliness while also avoiding the plethora of human rights issues associated with the mining of cobalt. Now, if there was nothing else special about this power bank, I would already say that I think it's worth a look, but there is one other feature that does make make this power bank stand out. It has a remote control. The bank has three ports in total, a fast charging 65 watt USB-C port that serves as an input and output port, an 18 watt USB-A output port, and a 12 volt DC output port. And both the DC and USB-A port can be toggled off using the remote. The fact that this bank has a remote and a DC charging port means it actually behaves more like a power station than a power bank, which is good since this thing is kind of a brick. I mean, literally, you could build a house with these things. At 8 by 4.3 by 2 inches, the glide charge is not small by any means, even when compared to other high capacity power banks. However, at 2.2 pounds, the bank is lighter than it looks. So if you can find the space to pack it or carry it around, the weight shouldn't be too bad. And now would probably be a good time to run down some of the power bank or station or whatever's other specs and features. On one full charge, I was able to use the bank to fully charge up my iPhone 15 Pro Max, my Galaxy Z Flip 5, my S24 Ultra, and still had enough juice left over to take my OLED Nintendo Switch from zero to 60%. Now this is actually a little strange since the bank is only supposed to have a capacity of 7,800 milliamp hours, but based on everything I was able to charge, my calculations put the bank at closer to 15,000 milliamp hours so I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. I guess all you really need to know is that this thing has more than enough juice to charge your personal electronic devices multiple times over and is still FAA friendly, so you can still take it on an airplane. Additionally, Space Gravity claims you can fully charge the Glide Charge in three hours. But with a 65 watt power brick, I was able to charge the bank consistently in under two hours. So once again, I'm not entirely sure where the Space Gravity marketing team are getting their numbers, but I think they are actually under-promising what this bank can actually do. That is weird. Another feature that isn't unique to this particular power bank, but I still appreciate, is the bank stops charging your devices once they hit 100%, which not only saves power, but protects your device's battery health. Finally, the Space Gravity folks have taken the liberty of putting all the nitty-gritty specs in the bottom of the bank. So if you are the kind of person who has an interest in all the volts, amps, and watts this bank has to offer, Feel free to pause the video now. So with the possible exception of the bank's size, things are looking pretty good, but if you are seriously considered picking up this bank, there are a few other things you should know. The bank has no IP rating, there is no wireless charging, and the bank uses the standard for light method for displaying its charge as opposed to a digital readout, which considering the size of the bank and its other power station-like features, I do think is a bit of a bummer. And finally, there's the price. You can pick up the power bank on GlideCharge.com for 99 USD. And for that, you get the bank, the remote, a DC cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and the usual literature. And whether or not you consider this to be a good price will depend on how you see this product. If you don't care about the benefits that come with the bank's lithium iron phosphate battery composition, the DC charging, or you think you won't have any use for the remote control, you will probably consider this bank to be a bit oversized and overpriced. However, if you do value those things, especially taking into account that the battery in this bank should last longer than a traditional lithium ion battery found in most other power banks, then this bank could potentially offer better value in the long term. The bank does also come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and it doesn't live up to your expectations, you can always return it and get your 99 bucks back. Well, that's all the information I have for one day. If you wind up picking up one of these, please feel free to come back here and share your experiences down in the comments. That way we can all continue to learn from each other and make more informed buying decisions. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.